Hi, this is Stan Lyle, and you're about to see Master Math's lesson on fraction decimal equivalency. Any fraction can be converted into a decimal. And that's real helpful because decimals are much easier to add, subtract, multiply, or divide than fractions are. There's two kinds of decimals. The first is called a terminating decimal. One half is a terminating decimal. If you convert one half to a decimal, you get 0.5 or 0 0.5000000. It ends at the 5. It terminates at the 5, so it's called a terminating decimal. The second kind of decimal is called a repeating decimal. 1 over 3 is a repeating decimal. If you convert 1 over 3 to a decimal by dividing the 1 by the 3, you get 0 0.33333 and the 3's go on forever. We indicate that uh, by putting a line over the 3 and that can be read 0 0.3 repeating. The 3 is repeat indefinitely and this is a repeating decimal. Now it's real easy to convert a fraction to a decimal as long as you know how to divide. All you have to do is divide the numerator of the fraction by the denominator. For instance, if I have the fraction one-fifth and I want to convert it to a decimal, I divide the one by the five and one divided by five equals point two and that's the decimal equivalent of that fraction one-fifth. Or if I had three over eights, I divide the three by the eight and I get point three seven five. Now both of those are terminating decimals. In other words, the decimal ends where you see the my writing of it end. Uh, the point two is really point two zero 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 zero. The point three seven five is point three seven five with an infinite number of zeros after it. They terminate and don't repeat themselves. One over nine is a repeating decimal. If I divide one by nine, I get point one 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 one, and the ones go on infinitely. And I indicate that by putting a slash mark over the one and read it point one repeating. Or one third. One third, if I divide one by three, I get point three three three, and the threes go on forever. Point three repeating. Well, what if I've got a mixed number like one and a half? How do I convert that to a uh, decimal? It's real easy. All you do is pull the one half aside and convert the one half to a, a decimal. One divided by two equals point five. And then I tack that point five right back on behind the one and I get one point five. All right, we just talked about converting a fraction into a decimal. Now let's convert a terminating decimal into a fraction. If you're on your toes, you notice I said terminating decimal. I didn't say repeating decimal. While you can convert a repeating decimal into a fraction, it's a little bit too complicated for this course, so we'll put it off till later. If you want to convert a terminating decimal to a fraction, the first thing you got to remember is the fact that the point the pl the numbers after the decimal point have what are called place names. If we look at point 0.718239 all the numbers after the decimal point are in a place, uh, decimal place. The seven is in the tenths place. The ones in the hundredths place. The eights in the thousandths place. The twos in the ten thousandths place, and so on. You'll notice that, that as we go from tenths to hundredths to thousands, we're just adding one zero. Uh, one, uh, one tenth is one over ten. One one hundredth is one over ten with an extra zero after it, or one hundredths, and so forth. Thousands is one more zero. Now, if we remember um, the place value, 
then it's real easy to convert a, a decimal into a uh, fraction. First, we write the digits of the decimal as the numerator of the fraction. And then we use the place value of the last digit of the decimal as the denominator. So, if I had 0.25 and I wanted to convert that into a fraction, I take the 25 and put it up here as the numerator of the fraction. Now, how do I get my denominator? Well, I take the last number of the decimal, which is in the hundredths place, and because that's the hundredths place, I put a hundred down there. So 0.25 is equivalent to 25 one hundredths. Now I can simplify 25 one hundredths. 25 goes into itself once. 100 divided by 25 is 4. So 25 over 100 equals 1 fourth. If I've got a decimal with a whole number in front of it, um, it's real easy to convert that to a fraction. All I do is take the portion of the number that's that's behind the decimal point, 0.75 in this case, and I convert that to a fraction. I take the 75 and make it the numerator. I'm in the tenths, hundredth spot, so I make 100 the denominator, and the fraction is 75 over 100. 75 over 100 can be reduced to 3 quarters, so the, the, uh, the whole number, 1, stays where it is, and I add 3 quarters behind it, and 1.75 equals 1 and 3 quarters. Now you try it. Convert 3 fifths to a decimal. You may want to hit your pause button to give yourself time to work the problem out. Get a piece of paper and a pencil and do the math, and when you get done, hit the forward button to move on to the next slide. That was easy. Three-fifths converted to a decimal. All I do is divide the 3 by 5 and I get 0.6. So 3 fifths equals 0.6. Try this one. And don't forget to pause the video until you get done with the math and then hit the forward arrow. two-thirds. Well, I divide the two by the three and I get point six 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 or point six repeating and that's the answer. Try this one. One and seven eighths. All right. What I want to do is pull the seven eighths to the side and convert that to a decimal. So I've got seven divided by eight. Seven divided by eight, which equals 0.875. Now I take that 0.875 and tack it on to the one, and I got one. 0.875 is the equivalent of 1 and 7 eighths. Convert 0.36 to a fraction and hit the forward arrow when you're done. All right, I want to convert 0.36 to a fraction. It's real easy. I take the digit, 3, 6, and make it the numerator of my fraction. Now I've got to figure out what the denominator is. 0.36, well, the 3 is in the tenth spot, and the 6 is in the hundredth spot. The 6 is the last digit, so I use the hundredth spot, and it's 36 over 100. 
Now I can simplify 36 over 100 or reduce it. And one of the ways you can reduce fractions is to look at the numerator and denominator and decide whether they're both even numbers. If they are, you can cut them both in half. So 36, half of 36 is 18, half of 100 is 50. So I've reduced it to 18 over 50. But they're both still even numbers, so I can cut them in half again. 18 cut in half is 9, 50 cut in half is 25, so now I'm at 9 over 25. But that's as far as I can go, because 9 is not an even number, it's an odd number, so I've got to stop there, and I've reduced it to 9 over 25. I reach into my pocket and pull out the following change. Write in standard form how much money I have. Hit the forward arrow when you're done. Well, let's see how much money we got. We've got one dollar, one whole dollar, We've got a second whole dollar. We've also got a quarter. A qu that's a quarter of a dollar. So I've got one quarter of a whole dollar. And then I've got a couple of dimes. Each of those dimes is one-tenth of a dollar. There are ten dimes to a dollar, so each dime is one-tenth of a dollar. So I've got one-tenth plus one-tenth. So now I've got the two dimes out of the way. But it's going to be a lot easier to add those if I convert them to decimals. I, you know, adding one fourth plus one tenth plus one tenth, I got to get a common denominator. It's it's a drawn out affair. It's a lot easier to just convert them to decimals. So let's convert the one quarter to a decimal. One quarter as a decimal, I divide one by four and I get point two five. One tenth as a decimal, I divide one by ten and I get point one. So now I've got one whole plus another whole plus 0.25 plus 1 plus 1. That's 2 plus 25, 35, 45, $2.45. The basketball game lasted 2.44 hours. Convert the length to a mixed number and simplify. Let's see, can we convert 2.44 into a mixed number? I think we can. First, let's pull out that 0.44 and convert it into a fraction. All right, to convert it into a fraction, I take the digits, 4, 4, and put it over the place of the last digit. Well, the last digit's in the hundredths place, so it's 44 over 100. Now, I take that 44 over 100, and I tack it on to the 2, I replace the 0.44 with 44 over 100, and I've got 2 and 44 one hundredths. I can simplify that because the top, the numerator and the denominator are both even numbers, I can cut it in half. So 44 cut in half is 22, half of 100 is 50. They're still even numbers, so I can cut them in half again. 22 cut in half is 11, 50 cut in half is 25. Now I'm down to 2 and 11 25ths, and that's as far as I can take it. Well, we hope you learned a whole bunch, and now it's time to try it on your own. Go to www.mastermath.info. On the worksheets page, under 6th grade first quarter, download Fraction Decimal Equivalency, print it, and try the worksheet on your own. I hope you had a good time and look forward to seeing you again soon.